Hey everybody and welcome to the kickabout. We are going to do a very quick reaction video. We are we have recorded already a whole bunch of other videos to wrap up the Premier League season. Uh, but we thought we'd also tag on a video to go before all of that and talk about the uh, the England squad that was announced today uh, by Gareth Southgate. Uh, the 33 man training camp squad as it's called. Um, before it is cold down to the 26th level. Uh, make sure you like, make sure you comment, make sure you subscribe to the channel, all that good stuff. We're getting close to that 500 subscriber mark, so please, if you are watching and enjoying and you haven't subbed, please do consider hitting that button uh, and getting us near that 500 mark. Right, uh, I'm going to flash the squad up here now. I've got it on the screen here for us to look at as well. Um, we're going to go through and talk about some of the, obviously, some of the emissions from the squad, um, some of the, the people that have been included and, and also what we think the starting 11 should be now that we know roughly what Gareth Southgate's uh, thinking is. Uh, so, yeah, let's take a look at this squad then. Um, obviously, goalkeepers-wise, I, I think that's fair. I mean, obviously, the only one that's potentially missing is Nick Pope. Yeah, but, but he's literally just come back last game of the season. So. Yeah, um, and I think, realistically, Jordan Pickford and, and Aaron Ramsdale is going to be his one and two. Yeah, I mean, no one's going to play other than Jordan Pickford, are they, unless there's an injury, so... Yeah, agreed. Um, I think that uh, James Trafford, I suspect he's only been picked in this just because of the link with the under-21s and yeah. maybe it's just a bit of experience for him because if you're picking based on a, on, a, on ability, uh, you're not picking James Trafford, are you? Mm. He's, had, he's had a poor season, in, in my opinion. So what, do you ever look at like other countries' teams? And as I look at, like, I was looking at the other teams coming through, um, for example, like Germany, and they've got like Manuel Neuer and Andre Testegen. And um, the city guy Ortega. Yeah. And I just think when you've got like three unbelievable goalkeepers, and you know, like Andre Testegen plays for Barcelona, doesn't get anywhere well, near the German. Well, squad. Spain had that problem for years, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, Casillas like, and Valdez. Yeah, they had, and then they had um, Pepe, Reina, De Gea, yeah, yeah. Um, at various points as well. Um, they also had uh, Court Courtois, Spanish, isn't he? No, he's Belgium, Belgium isn't he? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Who was the other? They had one other goalkeeper. Oh. um sake what was his name I'm sure he was in goal for Atletico don't say you're black no not him there was somebody else I might, maybe I think there's somebody else it'll come to me in a minute but anyway it's a similar situation yeah. we've always only ever had certainly in the last yeah, 10 we years one at a time it's one yeah. um, and all the others I mean that being said Ramsdale worries me with the ball at his feet but that Pickford has made a couple of mistakes with him yeah. the ball at his feet but by and large Pickford is fine with the ball at his feet yeah. Ramsdale however Pickford would, for would England is me. actually I watch him in the Premier League and I don't really rate him too much, but I watch him for England and I'm quite happy having him there. I think this season Pickford's been very good in the Premier League. Yeah. I mean, I put him in my team of the year this year. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he's been very, very good. He has made a couple of mistakes, but then when you're playing for Everton, you're seeing that much yeah. more of the ball. The chances yeah. are you are going to make, make yeah. a mistake or two. Um, so, yeah, I don't think there's anything to really write him about the goalkeepers. I think we're expecting him to, to drop Trafford and mm -hmm. take the other three. Um Defenders is where it gets interesting. Yeah. Um, so, obviously, if you play abroad, you're invisible because Tamori still doesn't get in. But, uh, you know, being invisible abroad is both a good and a bad thing. It's a bad thing because you're not getting in the squad if you're Tamori. But it's a good thing for us because Eric Dyer doesn't get in the squad. <laughs> um, but, yeah, elsewhere in that squad, I mean, obviously, he's picking a few players who... You know, from a youth perspective, like uh, you know, uh, Kwanzaa from from Liverpool, yeah. you expect him to be one It'll of the dropped, ones to be yeah. dropped. The big question mark for me is left back. Mm. I look, I look at that, and and he, Southgate has already said that Luke Shaw faces a real race against time to to get in this squad. And if he's saying that, it, it almost sounds like Southgate is expecting Luke Shaw to not mm. be fit. And then I look at that, and I think, okay, fine. Well, who's your plan B then? Well, Joe Gomez has played left back quite a bit for Liverpool. He has, but the problem is, is that I I think it's silly to not take another naturally left footed well, player. See, I didn't know this until we watched the footage earlier. But if Branthwaite is left footed, could do left back, I suppose. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I agree. I would have taken, even though I don't think he's been very good. I'd have probably taken like a Chilwell. I think, yeah, a chill well. I mean, Tarek Mitchell has, has been involved yeah, in the England squads yeah. before. He's been very good. Um, Robinson at Fulham is a, obviously is in a very outside shout, but um, you know if you're struggling at left back, then he's an option. So yeah, I'm not saying we don't have players in there that could go and fill fill mm. that hole, but it just feels like why why are we looking to patch 
yeah. the team when we've got naturally left left footed players who play left back week in week out available and fit. Annoyingly, I and think not it would be picked. Trippier that plays there as well. Oh, of course he will, but then Trippier's not been. He's been shit. He has been pretty shit yeah. this year, um, certainly in the second half of the year. Anyway, um, and then elsewhere in that team, I would like to see Lewis Dunk left at home. Yeah, personally. I think Gay will be left at home. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I think he'll take concert. You think he'll take concert? Yeah, I think concert over Gay. Oh, sorry, concert. I thought you said Kwanzaa. No, sorry, I'm getting confused. Kwanzaa. Yeah, if one of those two can be left at home just to avoid that <laughs> confusion, that'd be great. No, Ezri concert. No, I, I think you're right. I think he goes. I think he's been. He's had a very good season for Aston Villa. Um, I I don't know. I think if he ta- if he doesn't take Kwanzaa and he doesn't take Lewis Dunk. And Luke Shaw doesn't go either. I, I think he will take Lewis Dunk. You think? Yeah. He's been playing in all the friendlies recently. He's been so bad. I know. <laughs> yeah. He's been so bad. <laughs> Why are we taking 32-year-old untested players? Mm. Oh, God. I don't know. Anyway, but yeah, I, I think for me, um, I yeah, I would have liked to see... Ty- I think Tyrick Mitchell would have been a really good op- option mm. to have in there. He's young, he's exciting, uh, he's had a good season with Palace. They've ended the season really well, so his confidence is going to be high. Um, we can probably just about name the back four anyway, yeah. regardless of what yeah. we... Because we're going we're gonna to do our own 11 that we want, we'd want, we like to see, um, but it probably won't be the 11 that, that we do see. Um, into the midfielders, I mean, it always makes me laugh when you see these squads because the midfielders look so... There's so few of them. Yeah. So have we not got any other midfielders? <laughs> um, obviously, the, the, there's... there's uh, Two players in there that maybe um, would be, again, prime candidates for the chop in Curtis Jones uh, and Adam Wharton, who's obviously had a great season at, uh, yeah, at Palace. Yeah, I think those two will be dropped. I think Adam Wharton is probably the biggest surprise inclusion of yeah. the entire squad, yeah. um, to be brutally honest. Um, I'm not against it. I think he's done well, mm-hmm. but it's, it's too early for him. You can't throw him into a European mm-hmm. tournament off the back of, of no experience. Curtis Jones, I think, has been good, but again, I don't think so. I think he'll go with... Gallagher, um, Rice, Maynard and it, Trent. It is interesting that Trent's been listed as a midfielder though, isn't it? Yeah, but it's also interesting that Bellingham and Madison have been listed as forwards. Yes, and, and I suppose Foden you could you could class in that. But, yeah, um, yeah I, I guess that's... I think Southgate alluded to this as well. I think he said, um, you know, it's not about what position they start, it's about where they end up, mm. potentially. So I think that's that's a fair comment. Um, we know where Bellingham is going to play. We know he's going to We know he's going to start. Um... Kobe, Kobe Mainu, mm-hmm. realistically, how much game time do you think he is going to get in the Euros? Because I'm, I'm expecting him to go as part of the 26. I think he's got to go. Um, how much I would play him and how much Southgate will play him differs highly. Um, I would be surprised. I think he'll he'll come on for like five minutes at the end of a game. He'll be that sort of player that I don't think Southgate will use him enough. Yeah. Uh I think for the same reason I I think about Jared Bowen from a a selfish point of view as a West Ham fan the only way I see Bowen having a significant say in this Euros is if we have if we win both of our two European group games at the start and then the third game becomes a bit of a dead rubber Mm. then I think you'll see the likes of mine who start Bowen will start because he'll start resting players Um, but I think they're all in good enough form that when they come in and play really well I think it could give Southgate a headache Yeah, because if if Bowen as a minor will come in and play really, really well in that mm. third game. He's like, oh, fuck, what do I do now? Do I just revert back? Like, So anyway, and then moving on to forwards, um, I think the probably the looking at that list there, the two surprise inclusions for me I, is probably... Um, Eze and Madison. Edison, yeah, Eze and Madison, yeah. I would say Madison less so because he has been involved in English squads before, mm. but I would say his form since he's been back from injury has not been yeah. what it was before. So I think he's... Maybe a little bit fortunate. Um, I'm really happy to see Eze in there. Though. Yeah, yeah. I'm really pleased to see I, him. I in think there. he'll be one of the ones to be dropped, though. Unfortunately, I don't know. I feel, I feel like he might take him. Do you reckon? Yeah, I think there's. If if you've got to drop six altogether, if we're assuming so, if we're assuming that Trafford's going to be dropped, mm-hmm. if we're assuming that Kwanzaa is going to be dropped, you think Mark Gay might be dropped? Yeah, I think Gay. Um, I think Curtis Jones and Adam Water are going to be dropped. That leaves only one left, so that means. You've yes. got to drop one of Eze, Madison, or Grealish, probably, in my opinion, or maybe Ivan Tony. One of those yeah, four. Out of that, I'd drop Madison. I mean, you've you've got Phil Foden, Bellingham, that can play in the 10. Yeah. 
So yeah, I'd, I'd drop Madison, I think. I'd keep Eze because I think he's a good option to have on the left because we've only really got Anthony Gordon and Eze and I guess Jack Grealish. Do you think, going through Southgate's head, that he might be thinking about dropping Watkins? I think that would be fucking stupid. I think it would be stupid. Don't go I just wonder if he's thinking, if he's looking at thinking, well, Ivan Tony's great at pedal. He's a great at set pieces. He's a good plan B to have. Jared Bowen can play on the wing, but he can also play through the middle. Mm. Will he be thinking that because of that reason that he doesn't need Watkins because he's got Bowen to do... But Watkins can play on the wing. He can, but I, I think this season he's primarily played through the middle, isn't he? Yeah. Not? So I wonder whether he'll just think that Watkins is a striker and nothing but, whereas Bowen is more both. I think if you take Tony over Watkins based on the fact we might have a penalty shootout would be out of order. Yeah. I, 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 I'm, I'm totally agree. I, mm. I wouldn't do that either. I'm just um, spitballing as to maybe what, what sort of thoughts are going through Southgate's mm. head. Um, but personally, I would drop either Grealish or Madison yeah. um, from that list. Yeah, um, or maybe even... Mm, Ivan Tony's been really bad. Yes, yeah. <laughs> He's been really poor. He doesn't deserve to go. No. Um, I mean, he, he did play quite well in that one friendly, I suppose. And and obviously players like Ivan Tony, you know, they're playing in a, in a Brentford side that has been pretty poor. Mm. I mean, to be honest, you could even play... Phil Foden's like a false nine. Yeah. Cole Palmer could do a false yeah. nine. Anthony Gordon can play through the middle. Yeah. Um, so, so we've, we've got a ton of options. I don't think we need those three strikers. No. So maybe, maybe Ivan Tony is the one to drop them. I think you're genuinely just taking Ivan Tony for penalties. Yeah. I think maybe you're right. Maybe Ivan Tony is the one to drop. Because I suppose if, if Harry Kane gets injured, um, Southgate will want to have somebody who's similar enough to yeah. Harry Kane. Ivan Tony is probably the next nearest to that Harry yeah. Kane type player. But I think that trying to find a replacement for plan A rather than looking at a plan B like yeah. a Watkins or a Bowen or a, a Gordon, whoever, would be silly. Mm. I think that would be quite poor planning from Southgate yeah. to not plan to have Ollie Watkins playing at some point and then allow or teach the team how to play when Watkins is in the team yeah. rather than Harry Kane. Um, so, yeah, I think Ivan, I think leaving Ivan Tony at home is probably uh, the best um, the best result there. Um I also think that maybe Jack Grealish is probably quite a good guy to have around the camp because he look, he's such a lad, isn't yeah. he? So I think he'd be quite a good one to have around the camp, if nothing else. Uh, right, um, obviously the exclusions. We've, we've talked about Rashford in other videos, but we'll cover him quickly again. Um, him and Jordan Henderson are the two mm -hmm. big names. Yeah. Uh, I don't think there's going to be too many England fans that are going to disagree with this. No, no. Um, Jordan Henderson's the reasoning behind it, apparently, was that... So this is, the, this is where Southgate ties himself up in a knot really because he he gives a reason as, as for a player that shouldn't go yeah like Rashford for example so his reason for reasoning for Rashford was pure and simple that other players in his position on the left wing have had better seasons than him mm. and then he picks Jack Grealish yeah I don't think Jack Grealish has had a better season than Rashford his attitude has been better yeah but he certainly not had a in terms of playing numbers and statistical ways mm. I don't think there's much in it if at all um, and then he says that Jordan Henderson, the reason that he hasn't been, um, uh, he's not in the squad, is because he got injured in the last England camp or something. Yeah. And it's like, well, the last England camp was, what, a couple of months ago? And he's been playing for Ajax since then. Yeah, so I, I don't get that reasoning at all. That, to me, sounds like a bit of a cop-out. Yeah. Um, that maybe, if he just said, you know what, Henderson's been amazing for us, but, you know, I've decided that I want to give youth a bit more of a chance mm. here. Um, I, I don't think there's a problem with that. No. I mean... I wonder what... He told Henderson as well when he phoned him up whether he said, I've not picked you because I think you're still injured. <laughs> yeah, I've not picked you because I'm worried you're going to get injured. But then he, <laughs> but then he's taking Luke, he's picking Luke yeah. Shaw, who's not played since February yeah. um, and has, by the sounds of it, a pretty slim chance of making the uh, making the tournament. So, yeah, I don't, I don't really get it. Um, but there are, on that point, there are other injury concerns to players in this squad. Obviously, Harry Maguire, I think, is still injured. Mm -hmm. um, Harry Kane's carrying a knock, although apparently he'll be okay. Uh, Sacco is carrying a knock Anthony again. Gordon. Anthony Gordon is carrying a knock, so there's there are still Duke some question Bellingham's marks. Playing in the Champions League final. Yeah, so England won't see Duke Bellingham until about the week before mm. the first game because of the uh, Champions League final and then the break that he'll be given after after playing that. So yeah, um, it's there's in, it's interesting reading into this. Um, I, th I think that Gareth Southgate doesn't help himself sometimes with his reasoning because you can. You know, the reasoning he uses to not allow, not bring in one player, you can then say, well, hang on a minute, for that same reason, why have you picked him? Mm. Um, so it doesn't really make a great deal of sense. But anyway, um, so that's the 33. 
that has to come down to 26. We think we've named the, the six that we think are going to be dropped. So it's going to be Trafford. It's going to be uh, Mark Gay, Kwanzaa. I wish my fucking screen would stop turning <laughs> off. Uh, Mark Gay, uh, Jarrell Kwanzaa, Curtis Jones, Adam Wharton, and Ivan Tony. They're the six mm. that we think are likely to be dropped. Um, I th- I would be okay if he dropped Madison over Tony. Um, but yeah. other than that, I would... Well, that's, that's a lie. Actually, I would prefer he kept Gay and dropped Lewis Dunk, personally. But I, th- I think we're right in saying that I think that is the six yeah. he'll go with. But I do think he should drop Dunk and keep Mark Gay. Um, right, let's quickly... Um, go through what we would like to see as our starting 11. Mm-hmm. And let's just run through this pretty quickly. Um, so my starting 11, I'd have a lot of this is going to be the same. I think anyway, Jordan Pickford in goal, mm-hmm. obviously uh, back four, and bearing in mind, we're going with what we want to happen, not what we think will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, Carl Walker at right back, mm-hmm. John stones and Branthwaite at center back and Luke Shaw on the assumption he's fit at mm-hmm. left back. Midfield two in front is Rice and Bellingham. Rice being the one that holds Bellingham has got one for free mm-hmm. roll. Um, the th- then a, then a three, so it's a four two three one. Then the three is um, uh, Palmer, Foden, and Saka, mm-hmm. um, and Harry Kane. The only potential change I might do instead of that is switch Palmer out to the right for Saka, bring Saka out, and put Gordon on the left. Mm-hmm. That would be the only other maybe slight alteration I'd make. Um, but other than that, I, I'd be surprised if yours is massively different to that. Yeah, mine would be Pickford in goal, um, right back Carl Walker, um, Harry Maguire and John Stone centre back, uh, Luke Shaw left back again if he's fit. Um, then I'd have Rice and uh, Bellingham, the two midfielders, yep. obvious which way around. Um, in the 10, I would have Phil Foden. Yep. On the right, I'd have Cole Palmer. On the left, I'd have Anthony Gordon yep. and then Harry Kane up front. Yep. Yeah, I think that's... I'd be. I think. I don't. I don't want to be too sensationalist with this because England fans are long criticised for getting too excited ahead of a tournament when we say that. Oh, you know, it's it's coming home and all the other shit that we like to throw out. I cannot. I cannot remember a major tournament or England heading into major tournament with so many players in form. Mm. I don't recall a time we've had so many attacking players. I think we've got six attacking players that have scored like eighteen or more mm. goals or twenty or more goals or something like that. Um, He's probably got a defensive manager, isn't it? <laughs> I re- do you know what? Part of me hopes that the players just go, do you know what? Fuck this. Yeah. Um, we, we, we're just, we're just going to do it ourselves. Um, and but- get handed a little note. And like- <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I'm really quite excited for this summer because I've just got this feeling that maybe, maybe this is our time. Maybe we will see something a bit different from Southgate. Maybe it's coming home. Maybe it is coming home. And I, I, I would... Even though Southgate is a defensive-minded manager, he must be aware of the levels of attacking talent that he has at his display, mm. or at, at, at his disposal. Sorry, um, I heard someone today saying that because he's a defensive manager, he will know that defensively we are not as strong as we are going forward. But then you think, well, in that case, stop defending so hard. Fight then. fire with fire. Yeah, yeah. Like, just just go for it. I mean, I don't know. I mean, as an England fan, let me put it to you like this: if we got knocked out in the quarterfinals, but we really went for it. But got to the final and lost playing defensively. What would you prefer? That's that's the thing, and I, I think the way we have lost has been the most disappointing thing. Because um, we should be going into this tournament as defending champions, really. Yeah, I mean that Italy game always hits me as our, our biggest chance ever, because um, that Italy team weren't great. They were poor. And, we, we should have kicked on and won that game. And it's, it's happened in a few games where we've gone one goal up quite early on. It happened in the Italy game. It happened in the Croatia game. Mm-hmm. Gone one nil up, and then we're almost a bit like. Uh, what do we do? <laughs> and then we just try and sit back and defend for like 85 minutes and, mm-hmm. and you can't do that. No. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't want to go too mad. We are, in most bookies, the favourites, um, but obviously that's not necessarily what they think. It's just what the, the, the punters, mm. that's all the, where all the money is going, which is why the odds get driven down. Um, but I, I think outside of us, it's only really France that have got the level of attacking talent that we do right now. And, I, you know, there's still some great teams that, you know, Portugal are going to be yeah. strong. Spain are beginning to rebuild a little bit, so that, you know there's going to be some strong teams there. But I think that for for once, we when we go into these these big games, and unfortunately, when you look at Southgate's record, it probably flies in the face of what I'm about to say. <laughs> we should be going into those games thinking, right, we're going in here as favourites. We're going to play like we're the favourites. Mm-hmm. We're going to play like we are the stronger team. But unfortunately, because of the way Southgate sets up, we often go in there with that inferiority complex, um, and we go into those games with a bit of a, a hesitant kind of attitude. 
and then it transcends into the sort of the pretty bang average displays that you see. Yeah, and we make games harder than they need to be. I mean, you look at our group games, we've got um, Serbia, Denmark, and Slovenia, I believe. And, like, no disrespect to any of them, but we should be winning all three of those games, and especially yeah. games against, like, Slovenia. It should be fairly comfortable, but I've, I just see us dragging out a 1-0 win. Do you mm. know what I mean? No, uh, there's no game where I think, oh, yeah, we'll probably beat them three or four nil, which which you probably should do. You look at the talent in our team. Yeah. Um, but we, we just don't play like a team that's going to go out there and score three or four goals. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree. Um, and I think you, you know, if, if the front four is, or if I, even if, if you include Belling in there and say it's a front five, if you, if you assume that Rice is going to sit deep mm. and allow Belling to go on, your front five of Bellingham, Foden, Palmer, Gordon and Kane... I mean, there aren't many mm. international teams that can boast an attacking yeah. unit with that much talent, um, you know, and they're all playing at the top level. They're all playing really, really well. I, I mean, it's I don't, I don't want to say though. this is our last best opportunity, but how, you know, how many more tournaments has Harry Kane got in him? He's 32 mm. now, I think, 32, yeah. 33, um, so which means he'll be at 34, 35 by the time the next tournament comes around. Um, I'm not saying we don't have great talent coming through. We do, because Watkins is still reasonably young. Um, so we've, st- we've got other players coming through, but these are the these. You know, Harry Kane is breaking records left, right, and centre for Bayern mm. Munich. Just, just go for it, Southgate. Yeah. You know, and let let them. I'm, I don't mind you playing a bit defensive in certain times in certain games. That's fine. You know, that's tactical decisions that you have to make on the fly, depending on the on the opponent and the situation. But yeah, when you're playing those those smaller teams, go and impose yourselves. Mm. Go and show them why you're the, the favourites for the tournament. Don't sit back and and. Because you know, otherwise you will have another hungry situation mm. where we get thumped four 0 So yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think we're geared up for a really exciting, or certainly a really intriguing summer, nonetheless. Um, let us know what your um, eleven should be to start the tournament. Let us know also what you think about the squad. Who should be uh, who should be taken away from that thirty three? Are there any players that you think should be in there um, that we've uh, that we've maybe not talked about? So yeah, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. It's coming home, isn't it? <laughs> it's coming home. <laughs> See you later, guys. See you later.